So I suppose the best place to start this particular story is at its beginning. Here's my new uh, glass coral reef tank. And here's the brand new stand and canopy that uh, it will go on. Uh, collected over here will be some LED strip light type lighting uh, along with a uh, automatic refill. We're also going to be hooking up an Apex computer uh, to the aquarium and I believe we're also going to be running some kind of a network line or at least running that cable to my uh, network uh, or router connection so that we can uh, get the uh, Apex itself online. And Durzo standpipe return line and here is the uh, reef tank that's been here for the last 12 years. Uh, this is the one that we just recently put the uh, Yabo uh, water pumps in. And uh, embarrassingly, I probably should have cleaned it before I turned the camera on, but uh, I'm taking this tank down tonight. Uh, so again, part of the starting point has to do with uh, getting prepared. And that's what we're doing right now. Uh, this is live rock that just uh, came in recently and I'm going to be trash canning it or what's called curing it at least overnight and then tomorrow Condi will arrive and uh, pressure wash off all the uh, loose stuff and then we're going to create another really fancy coral reef sculpture. So having said all that, welcome to LA Fish Guys. Let's get to work. So, live rock is rock that was taken directly from the ocean. It was placed in these containers, and it used to be flown in. But with the price of fuel and air freight, that cost has gotten quite high. And so now what they do is they containerize it, bring it in on ships and such. So, this is fresh live rock, recently removed from the ocean can see it's still got lots of life on it, lots of little algaes, sponges, uh, there's crabs and such moving around in here. I'm sure that the slower transportation process will have cost us a little bit of the life, but there's still a tremendous amount of life on there. Condi had pre-selected this for me the other day, fresh off the container or out of the container. Uh, we were looking for choice pieces so that he can do a uh, sculpture. So now the intent here is to remove the rock and place it in these uh, trash cans here and then I'm going to pump in salt water that I've made up there and let it sit overnight. It'll help flush the rock a little bit. Truly, if I had a protein skimmer in another week, uh, if I was able to set this up on a system and literally try to drive all those organics out of the system, that would be the better way, but time doesn't allow us that. Uh, Condi will be here tomorrow and he'll then pressure wash the rock. So, I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of these uh, five boxes of rock. I think there's about 250, 260 pounds, and uh, what I call trash can it. As a result of being out of water for such an extended period of time, much of the life on the live rock has died, or at least has declined enough that it needs to be removed. As mentioned, more time would allow for a more thorough job of decreasing the loss of life that is on the rock, but I don't have that luxury of time. By placing the live rock into containers and submersing it in salt water, the death and loose debris on the rock will at the least be softened and at best can be evacuated from the live rock. Ultimately, the goal here is to minimize the amount of waste and debris from entering the new tank and tainting or polluting it. You can see that there's a lot of color on the rocks. There's uh, algaes such on the rocks, uh, calcareous growth. Um, 
Some of that we're going to end up losing. In fact, a lot of it will probably end up losing just as a result of the uh, pressure washing to kind of an attempt to get rid of it. I'd like to hang on to some of that, but at the same time comes a uh, significant increase in waste in the system, making it for a much stronger cycle. And if that's not stuff that we need to have in the tank, we don't uh, need to put it in there to start with. Okay, so I'm going to pump some uh, new salt water over and start flushing the rock. I've mentioned now a couple of times pressure washing the rock. Condi will arrive tomorrow and use an actual pressure washer to basically blast off any of the loose debris that still remains on the rock. So in a sense, what I'm doing now is pre-soaking the rock for it to be washed off at a later time. So we're now making the uh, salt water that will go into the reef tank. I have been spending the last week almost making salt water. I think I've probably made about 900 gallons of reverse osmosis, which in turn gets pumped over into the second container. And once the salt's added, it gets uh, turned up and stirred up and such inside there. I'm still a few gallons shy of 200, which is what I need to make, but it's running by tomorrow morning. I should have the balance of that. The uh, purification method has been uh, SpectraPure's um, max cap system. It's like a four or five stage unit. I think there's a big carbon canister filter down here, um, paper or a mechanical filter, a carbon filter, goes through the reverse osmosis, the dual reverse osmosis, and through two stages of deionization. And I think what starts out at 369 parts per million of total dissolved solids. Uh, once it goes through the RO, we're down to 10. And then once it comes into, uh, or should I say, leaves the first stage of um, the DI, in this case, I did change that cartridge last night, so it's zero total dissolved solids. And then out of the sec oops, out of the first one, which is brand new, should be zero. And out of the second one, it's still at zero. So there's a basically a hospital grade or science grade water, laboratory grade water, uh, going into my uh, mixing containers that are on the other side of the garage over there. So um, we've got two tanks set up here. Uh, the far one is actually holding fish from the fish holding system uh, recycling and the second one here is set up um, to hold the fish out of the reef tank. <sighs> corals possibly as well, so maybe corals go over here and fish go into the system. I'll have to test the water over there tomorrow and see where it's at. Uh, what's in my tank, uh, I really enjoy those fish, I'd certainly hate to lose them. Uh, this would be a new system, meaning it hasn't really officially gone through a cycle yet, but I have had it running with uh, grunge pads and pieces of live rock for the last two weeks, so theoretically it's already gone through its initial cycle. So with that being said, it's now time to uh, go in and start tearing down uh, the coral reef tank. The old one that is. As I prepare to disassemble the tank, I want to step back for a moment and observe it and appreciate it. Not only what it's become, but how long it was here, what I'd placed into it, and most importantly, what did I learn from it? Unintentionally, this tank was set up back in 2004. It was intended that originally a piano would go in this spot. Circumstances arose and it became a reef tank. That pair of percula clownfish came from a customer's tank. They just hid in his tank, but after switching out his perks for a pair of Ocellaris, these clowns made a 180 degree change in personality. At one time, this tank had a resplendent angelfish in it. She swam in here for about five years. She disappeared one day, possibly due to one of those rose anemones. Speaking of anemones, the rose anemone may be the more expensive, but I'll tell you right now, it's definitely the hardiest and your best choice. What else did I learn? I learned that these types of tanks become a responsibility 
that you can't just ignore them and provide service when it's convenient for you. It requires daily attention and at the least in the way of simply observing the tank to make sure that things are working as they're intended and supposed to. SpectraPure manufactures the best filtration systems on the market and they're one of the few manufacturers that actually make their own cartridges as well. If you're looking for a filtration system for your reef tank or fish tank, look no further and don't settle. Check out SpectraPure.com for more information. In addition to filtration systems, they also make some of the best dosing solutions on the market. The Leader Meter 3 can control up to four pumps and you can program the amount of transfer, the amount of fluid you want to transfer with the push of a button down to the milliliter. If you're looking for a dosing solution, check out SpectraPure.com. They're not only a manufacturer, they're an innovator, and they make some of the best equipment available. Does your aquarium look like this? Would you like it to grow less algae? Algae scrubbers work! And for the latest in convenience, simplicity, and low cost, meet the Hog Upflow Algae Scrubber. Air pump driven and LED light illuminated, the hog fits easily into your sump or aquarium. For more information, visit santa-monica.cc. So it's about seven o'clock on Sunday morning. I didn't get my end of the job done last night, so I'm starting this morning. And what I'm starting to do is take the water and the livestock out of the tank. First thing that I need to do, is get some clean water out of the system, undisturbed water. That's what the fish and the corals are going to go into and it behooves me to provide the, the best uh, quality water that I can, something that's not waited until the last minute and then taken out with all the dirty water. So I've got the big container outside there. I can pump majority of it into. I've got the trash can on the cart or wheels over here uh, that I can pump some of that water into. I can then get the fish out uh, into their system and start acclimating the corals uh, and then I'll have some reserve water that I can either bring back into the system or if we decide to handle the fish or the livestock in some other manner. So with that said, I guess it's time to uh, get to work. And just before we start taking the water out, we have to turn the system off so those pumps don't run dry. So start by getting the power turned off. In fact, this being the last time that this tank will be running, I guess it's time to turn all the electrical items off in the tank. No need to have them running, especially if I'm going to be draining the water out of them. Many times in the past, I've drained the water out of tanks only to realize I forgot to unplug the electrical aquarium heater, or I forgot to unplug the power heads or the water pumps that were inside the tank. At some point I'm made aware of that, whether it be the buzzing or grinding of a water pump or steam rising as a result of a heater that is now overheating. Morning. How are you? I'm okay, and you? I can't complain, you know. Uh, I have to admit I kind of just got started. Literally. <laughs> Man, I've getting, been getting prepared. For what? Uh, big job today. Did you hear about it? 
Yeah. Oh. How, are you, how are you? I'm all good. I'm going to start washing a rock outside. Okay. That's been in that water since last night. Okay. You'll see there's a little battery operated air pump uh, on one of them. I've been switching it over. Okay, a couple five gallon buckets of clean water. Um, got the big trash can here ready to accept some more water. And then I got the sump pump there pumping out into the container. So we'll store some of the old water, undisturbed old water. And Condi and Reggie are here now, ready to start cleaning the rock. Morning. Morning. How are you? Good, yourself? Not too bad. Are you ready to clean some rock? Always. Yeah, so what do you got planned there? Well, we're going to see what we could do to assist you over here on the breakdown of the tank. Cool. Meanwhile. Cool. And uh, we got the pressure washer. We're going to get the water ready for that and uh, start washing away. Hi. How are you doing? Fine and you? Yes, I woke up this morning. <laughs> How was your uh, croissant? You want another one? Sure. You want another one? I got a whole box of ten out there, so I'll get one going for you. You might run out of them messing with me. <laughs> you can have the whole box. And salt water being made up. Okay. So just about all the water is out of the tank. I've got most of the pieces of live rock. The corals at the moment are all sitting at the bottom of the tank. And that is the uh, one of the rose anemones. We're waiting for him to let go of the back. Uh, the other rose anemone that uh, had the clownfish eggs on it is that piece of rock down there. And then I may have tore that anemone. Uh, I think he was attached to two different rocks, but... Uh, so this will be the container that uh, will hold the corals. This container here is live rock that we can clean and he can use for the sculpture or finishing pieces. Those are some of the nicer pieces of rock. And then we've got uh, the boys out here rinsing off rock. Pressure washing it, getting the algaes and such off there. And Condi and Reggie having a, a very pleasant conversation about something, I'm sure. And then we're uh, still making salt water here. So one of the other advantages of taking out the uh, undisturbed water out of the tank before you start pulling all the, the rock and the corals is that it also gives you a chance to easily catch the fish. Um, it's hard for fish to get away when there's only a few inches of water for them to uh, run away from you on. And that was part of the reason for having those buckets of water there. I think I've got a clownfish there. And then from here I can get them out to their tank in the garage and acclimate them to that system. So I see a pressure washer. Uh, I see a bunch of rocks scattered across the driveway. What have you been doing to my uh, fancy live rock? I've just playing with it. Playing with it, huh? Playing with water, you know. It's, yeah. Uh, so what was the deal? Using the pressure washer to blast off all the uh, uh, unneeded, unnecessary life off the rock? Yep, that is correct, Jim. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> um, and some of the older pieces, you were able to get most of the Valonia off, or none of it off? Yeah, look, there's one piece that uh, you had it before. It's one of the old pieces right there. Uh -huh. That's another one right there. Okay. You can see it all on the... And then, so you're kind of uh, got it all spread out and envisioning um, the sculpture you're going to build? Yeah, okay, then over here I have uh, drawn out the... Oh. Basically the tank at 60 by 24, and the... Basically, I'll use a measuring table as I start building up to get the height on it, you know. We're at 30 inches, so, you know, this culture's got to be built somewhere around here. This is the overflow box, so I have to create the foundations here around in that area. Very cool. We have all that to work with, which 
I know it's more than enough, so. I'm looking excited, yeah, looking forward to some exciting uh, creativity. Well, that's good. Uh, you know, hopefully, we won't get too much rain. Yeah, it uh, does, never rains in Southern California, except for when you have to do work outside yeah, or on your aquarium. We'll take it. Yeah, that's true. We can put a sweatshirt on. I wore mine briefly this morning for the first time since last uh, winter. Okay. All right, boys. All right, Mr. Scott, you tell us what you're doing and what you need to get done. Well, uh, we're going to wait to get the tank in there, but we're going to do the plumbing. Set up manifold, set up plumbing, um, figure out where you know the lighting is going to be set up in the canopy. Uh, and then after that, once we get everything up and running, uh, next project will be setting up an apex. Very cool. So tell us a little bit about the lighting you're going to put in there. Uh, we're using Reefbright LED strips. Uh, cool. They're high intensity lights. There'll be four strips going up there. Ultimately, they will be controlled by the apex. So we get a natural sunrise, sunset, um, and have full control over the intensity. Um, and then in conjunction with that, since we mentioned apex, we'll be setting up an ATO that the apex will manage. So automatic top off, so Jim doesn't have to top off his water. His sump level will remain consistent. Um, That'll actually, to a certain degree, tap into this system out here. That's correct. We'll be drawing water directly from his RODI reservoir. So mm -hmm. have and that being the Spectre Pure filter system that uh, generates um, hospital grade water. That's correct. All right, and then the uh, the new water pump will be a um, Reef Breeders, uh, one of those DC pumps. Uh, yeah, it's a Jabo um, DC style return pump. Uh -huh. uh, hopefully that's up to the task and you know stands the test of longevity. Right. Uh, the idea being though that getting away from those big old AC uh, centrifugal pumps. Yeah, we're going to reduce the heat um, in Jim's tank quite a bit. Jim's depended on a chiller for a lot of years and. The ultimate goal here is not only reduce his electric bill, but also reduce the amount of heat going into the system. Heat transfer right. from pumps, lighting, stuff like that. So it makes the chiller come on less. Uh, well, it could make the chiller come on not at all, Ooh. except perhaps in the summer. Uh, the biggest concern might be cold temperatures in the winter, and we'll right. need a heater. And hopefully that proves to not be the case. Very cool. Very cool. We got a lot of work ahead of us, but we're excited for Jim. There About we go. Time. I'm getting excited too. Very cool. All right, well, let's get to work. Sounds good. <laughs> um.